This is Richard back at you guys. We got our instant clean machine hard at work cleaning all of our cases. We got Annie in the house this morning. Staying warm, trying to anyway. Pretty cool this morning. We got Esai, E S A I. Esai, kind of hard to pronounce that. 04 Chevy Avalanche in the house, black in color. Beautiful truck. Uh, but uh, going down the road, uh, one of the cooler lines popped off at the top on the radiator and they, they put it back on and uh, put fluid back in it and it still doesn't move. So we don't know if it broke the pump, just wiped the, the clutches out or anything like that. But uh, anytime that cooler line pops, uh, normally it pumps it out so fast it doesn't do much damage. But if it just comes out a little bit and leaks out more slowly, then it's more likely to hurt the clutches or something like that. So let's see what this looks like. Fluid looks pretty bad. Really dark. Oh, and it smells. It smells really good. I can't smell it, but Teresa can. <laughs> oh, come on, Teresa. It's not that bad. Now you can see here it already had a, a leak around the rear seal. Tail housing is pretty wet. Now, the cooler line popped off at the radiator. It didn't pop off back here at the tranny, so the tranny's not really covered uh, with tranny fluid from that. Now this is a, a young gentleman's truck. A little bit of trash in the bottom of the tail housing here. See our O-ring here that seals it to the case. And your overhaul kit, the O-ring will look just like that. It'll have an orange stripe on it. That's how you can identify it. Put your new bushing in here, new seal. Pull your speed sensor out. You can see here, these collect a lot of metal, stuff like that. A lot of times it gets out here on the end, starts affecting uh, how it works. Uh, so it is a magnet. You can see it grabs a screwdriver. So it, any metal that flies by it, it's going to definitely grab it. And then, of course, we have our yoke seal right here get that out of there come on there you go now we'll take this off and clean it but I just wanted to show you this here seals the uh, yoke splines and stuff from being able to get fluid to come out the center of the back of the yoke right there it's pretty wore out it's hard and I could almost probably just break it but it's square not round anymore so we got our Speed sensor, uh, reluctor wheel here. You can actually see the case bushing back down through here too. Uh, let's see, we're going to get our bell housing off here real quick. Got our lock up seal out of the way. Anytime you're going to pull the pump, you definitely want to pull this seal off first. If not, it'll hang up in here and then you can't get it out. definitely want to get this torque bit all the way down in here. If you don't, you can have a problem. <coughs> don't take much to strip them. <coughs> Sorry about the air leak, guys. I need to get a new fitting on my half inch gun there. The brass piece is brand new, but the Like I said, we always change the seals in here, put new clips on them, and then on your cooler line, it'll have a plastic uh, uh, retainer that slides over the fitting here and locks the ring in. If that piece is missing, uh, you can take a tie strap, a small tie strap, put it around here, tie it, clip it off, and it'll, it'll hold it on there too. So, but you always want to uh, put something on there to maintain that line in there. If not, the clip will fall right out. Now, 
Now we are going to build a little performance in this thing, so we are going to be putting a Corvette servo, uh, the wide band Z pack, and all that neat stuff. So making it work really nice. Uh, even if you, if I've always thought about, if you get a Corvette servo in one of these, go ahead and replace it with a new one because these wear really bad where the pin runs through. So just because it, you got a Corvette servo, don't mean it's good. We don't actually don't have no fluid in a connector. That's unbelievable. Yeah. That's I mostly do. Yep. So. We got Cody and Trent out there putting our Dodge diesel in this morning. Trent wrapped up our Corvette this morning. Got it. Done. I would say the old cooler line did it in. And you can see here the filter is just totally plugged up with clutch material and stuff. Yeah, it's not like an additive type no. smell. It's got a totally different smell to it. Your PWM solenoid, you always change your O-rings here. You got one here and here. Uh, you got them in your kit. Your three, two downshift solenoid the same way. Now we have uh, your pressure control solenoid here. They can vary from di different year to year. So the solenoid will be different than the plug. Your wiring harness is different too, depending on year to year. So. lock-up solenoid here. You have an O-ring here too. So if you're replacing the whole harness, you should have an O-ring already on your new system because this solenoid is made to it. If you're not replacing your harness but you're replacing your solenoid, uh, they do make a fits-all solenoid. You cut the wires and, and tie it in. So that way you don't uh, have to change the harness. Oops. Get our detent linkage off here. I hate that fluid running. You know, the air gun, the trigger so much quicker, there's less air or less air. for my electric guns. I always had to pull the trigger and wait on it a lot longer to get the bolts loose. I'm talking into the mic right there. Yeah, but that gun just overwhelms it. <laughs> Sounds good, doesn't it? Need to get more trigger, get a little RPM on that thing. Let us yeah, hear it singing. Yeah, no, they're going to be going, I can't hear what you're saying. <laughs> so we got our 8 millimeter bolts here, the longest ones uh, on the valve body part. And then on your uh, pillow switch here, you got some 10 millimeters up here that are longer than these. So in a little L shape here. You think so? Sure it is. Who's teaching here? Both of us. <laughs> Both of us. That thing just wants to keep on dripping, doesn't it? Time to empty it and fill up our clean burn machine, get us some heat in the building. It's been cold, cold last few mornings. So we have our pressure control solenoid here. Some of the shift kits will have you put an inner spring down in here behind your pressure control valve. Uh, so sometimes you have to do that with a shift kit.
course, you know you always want to get rid of all your plastic. Because, like I said, we're going to put a bigger boost valve in this. going to be a little bit higher pressures, too. And that's a, another reason why you want to get rid of your plastic and put a nice uh, Villist aluminum one in there. Isn't that pretty? Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we're going to get our PWM valve out of here. Pulse width modulating lockup valve. Of course, this is one of the easier ones to do again. Yeah, she's pretty ripe. There we go. Of course, you can see both ends are open. We'll drop a check ball in each end, put the spring back in, put it all back together. You'll have to push on the plug kind of hard to collapse the spring. Uh, but it will fit right back in there, and then your PWM is gone. Lock these two valves apart. Put a check ball here, check ball there, and you're done. So now if you're doing a dual clutch converter, uh, that, it, it makes it pretty firm. So we figured, we found that uh, anytime we're going to do that, we're going to leave the the PWM alone and it, it still works really nice. I think the guys are scaling, scaring Annie with an air hose, huh? Annie, lay down. Get in her bed. Lay down. Sometimes she gets kind of sketchy. Like I say, we got Annie. Annie's been beaten real bad, starved, everything like that. So she's kind of Jump. Some noises definitely bother her. Yeah. But she loves coming up here with us, so she enjoys it a lot. So we got our check balls out. Of course we got our detent or not our, our detent uh, linkage there. Have our accumulator here. Of course, they make different versions of this right here. They make three different kinds, and I like the middle kind. Uh, you can put it in there, and it'll bring the spring all the way to the top. Um, get rid of this plastic piston here, too, and put you a nice new piston in there. Uh, always scotch bright your surfaces up uh, where you're gonna, your new seals are going to be running. Makes them slide a lot smoother, a lot better that way uh, you're not getting a jerky accumulator piston trying to squeegee itself down the bore it has a uh, scotch bite marks in it where the oil is in the scotch bite marks and it just lets it slide really nice so of course we have a round hole square hole plate if you've got any damage in your areas you can fix that if you're putting a shift kit in it just read your instructions really well of course your fourth gear accumulator here Of course, you know what we do with these. We always stack them and, and get rid of them. Uh, well, that wet doesn't work at all. Got a check ball here in the case. Of course, we have our park linkage here. A lot of guys are, so we've seen this, these videos before and going, no, nah, you haven't. All these videos that we do daily are new videos. Every customer that brings their vehicle into our shop, we record uh, the teardown of the video, or the teardown of the tranny, and make a video. A lot of people we do are out of state, stuff like that, so they can get on their phone at the motel or at their house or wherever at. Uh, if they drop it off and uh, watch the teardown of the training and physically see what went wrong with it. Excuse me, you need to, if 
there ain't no if. They drop them off. Yeah, they drop them exactly. off. Exactly. Nobody hangs out. Yeah, nobody hangs out anymore. But all these uh, bolts have washer or seals on them here. We always double seal them because these bolts right here, you can see the oil that come out. So if this seal ever gets hard, it can leak. Uh, we've had them leak brand new, so. Oh, man, some of them are hard to get off. I am too. She don't know what she's doing. I think she's anxious. Yeah. She noises that she don't like. Yeah. So you got your pressure regulator valve here, your boost valve down through here, your lockup valve here. Always check here for any type of wear. Put your some new bushings in there. Always check down in here too for any sealing ring wear. Put a new bushing, scotch right all this stuff up. Data looks really nice. Of course, we have a dual spring slide. 13 vein pump rotor kit. Look at all them rotors in there. Really nice pump. What I like about these uh, dealer ones, though, they, they put stainless rings in them. Now, a lot of the overhaul kits, uh, the pump kits come with steel instead of stainless. So if we're building a high pressure unit, you always want to put stainless in there, not steel. Pump slide starting to get the bluing worn off. Pump slide pin. The spring. That's how you want to look here for any type of wear. Scott's brought this up really good, so it looks good. New seal, bushing, retainer back on there. Pretty simple. Get our band anchor out. Once you get the anchor up like this, you can just grab the drum and pull it right out. That way the band doesn't get hung on this edge right here and you just can't get it past the band. And once you start trying to get it out, it makes it really hard to get it out then. Of course, our second and fourth gear bands cooked. Have our band anchor. So you're starting to see it slide on the drum pretty good. Don't feel anything, just some coloring. Just check this for any type of wear, any bowing, anything in the drum with a flat edge. And we talk about that all the time. Go get you some 180 grit. So you can put a flashlight down here and shine through here. And just see what type of wear. Normally we'll clean the drum up. See it just a little bit. Mm -hmm. huh? See that? Right there. Right through there. Yeah, mm -hmm. starting to bow yeah. like that. The higher and these things they'll make a lot of pressure with even a good band will squeeze that drum and mess it up. So but a, a slip and hot band will do it worse. We have our reverse clutch here. Starting to see some chatter marks there. Like I said, I don't know, once it popped the cooler line, did he keep trying to move it forwards, backwards, or whatever. So there's no telling. Whew. That one smoked. That one smoked. That's what I'm smelling. Yep. You can look at your three, four clutch here, too. You can see the teeth are almost totally gone on them. Got an eighth of an inch of them missing right there. I like my toe slightly because it's, yeah. it's way too done for me. Yeah. Anytime they pop the cooler line, this will be the first clutch to go. Every time. Because this clutch here uh, is on in fourth and third gear. And so, and it's the smallest clutch. Where'd that go? Right there. Yeah. there. Okay. And you can see it just cooked it. Mm, yep. Totally gone. Everything's bowed up, bent. All kinds of stuff. But on these uh, three, four uh, springs right there, what we do is uh, these load springs, 
since these are no good, we'll keep the body because anytime we put a Sonex kit in here, uh, you put the Sonex springs in the body and throw the springs away. So we keep all these older ones because we do so many Sonex drums. Uh, we need to have the bodies to do it. And I was going to show you here again. You can see how that that three, four clutch uh, finger is almost gone right there. Of course, we have our forward clutches here. It was fixing to start taking them out too. Mm -hmm. Engine brake clutch. So this thing was fixing to go down like right now. So all bonded pistons. So we're going to replace all the rubber inside here. Now this hub right here, anytime you see a brass washer like this, 90% of the time this hub can be wore out or it can look brand new. And, and this one here looks really nice, but the washer has got a big old 30 thousandths rut in it where it locked on here. Mm -hmm. See that? Yeah. If you take it off on this one, it looks brand new. Oh, yeah, you can see. see the difference? Mm -hmm. So this one used to look like this one. Mm -hmm. So when you go back with the new steel sprag, uh, it'll eliminate this type of wearing. So hub looks good. It's good. Amazing. A lot of times the hubs are wiped out too. Look at your inner race, at your sprag rides on. Put some new bushings in here. Look at your sun gear really good. Scotch brights your inner or your outer race. Pretty simple. Now our overhaul kits come with a new snap ring right here. The factory one is a yellow snap ring. The one in the kit is a brown looking color. I don't know why they give that snap ring. I very seldom ever see any wear right there or anything, so that's kind of odd. Of course, we have our sun gear. You want to look on both sides of that for any wear. And you can. See here our shell's starting to really get knifed edged on the, oh, yeah. the splines there where this runs. Mm -hmm. So we'll put a hardened one of them in there to cure that problem. Of course we already have a roller bearing hub here, but we want to look at the inner splines on it and see how bad they are because that's where we see wear at now on these. And of course you can mm -hmm. come in there. They blow that off really good so you can really see it. On both sides usually. Yeah. So, just look at your planet really good for any type of pin discoloring, any chips in the gears, anything like that. Same way on your ring gear here, your outer ring gear. this out. The last one we did here, the case was almost stripped in here. We had to put a new case in, which it was a four-wheel drive. So a lot of people. Yeah. Yes. here right off the bat and see how much wear we have. 
very little wear, but we still have wear if you look at it right here. You can start seeing the, some wear on the edges right here. Not as much as the other one, but you can still see it. It's just a common problem with these cases. So this is a late model case that takes the hard seal here in the pump. Man, these are hard to get out sometimes. They're stuck in there. Uh, that is stiff. I just have to work on that a little bit and try to get that out. But now, like I said, this truck here, I believe he uh, plays with it a little bit. So we're probably going to take the wave out of here. Uh, that way, if he does do a lot of manually shifting, we know it's going to have a good, quick release on the clutch, stuff like that. So we want to protect our tranny any form, fashion, or way. Plastic thrush washer, four tab. Of course, on our Sprague race here, enter, you want to scotch bright this up really good. You can actually take it, it's kind of hard to do by hand, but you take and lock it on your planet, and you can grab some scotch bright, and you can just sit here and do this with it. Scotch bright it up really nice. Put a new sprag in here. So, not too bad. I mean, that just tells you what a cooler line can do if you don't stop like right now. And it's hard, especially at nighttime cruising around down the highway or something. When they come off, they just they dump it out quick. So, but anyway, it's what we do. We got we got a ton of work to do, huh, Teresa? Um, a ton of work. So. You can see the benches are full, the floor is full. So, guys, y'all don't forget to go subscribe and hit that notification bell. Teresa, you know we thank you. Definitely love you to death for videoing, and, and you're nice and clean. I didn't even get no fluid on you. Lucky man. Lucky man. Y'all have a great day.